Well, happy Friday, everybody. Nick Slavic here, proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company, also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades as an entrepreneur and a craftsperson and a lover of this trade to answer any of your questions, uh, to talk about any topics you want. So for homeowners, for do-it-yourselfers, this is a place to ask as many of the most knowledgeable people that follow this show any painting, any finishing question you've ever wanted, and we have the answers here. If we don't have the answers, we know who does. And for the pros, uh, you know what you're here for, marketing, uh, apprenticeship, uh, coding science, uh, business practices, technology, sprayers, all that fun stuff. Russ Perry, thanks for watching. There's Holly, my client concierge, production manager, uh, watching as well. Gustavo, thanks for watching. We got a good show today, uh, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America, the PDCA. Uh, it sends in a contractor question of the week and that deals with keeping yourself fit, keeping yourself healthy uh, for uh, the actual craft of painting. And then we are going to spend the rest of the show talking about grain and pore filling. And not only do I have a lot of stuff to show you, we are going to do some stuff. We got a brand new product for me that we're going to show uh, about grain filling. I'm going to show you how I actually fill uh, the grain and the pores on cabinet doors themselves. We got a whole bunch of samples here. Uh, I'm going to show you a special little technique that I use. Uh, it's a very intuitive technique. It's a very simple thing, uh, but it's how I make all my clients happy with their old cabinets. So, uh, number one, uh, oh, Mike Yachek, how you doing there, buddy? Um, so, the PDCA, uh, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America, they send in the contractor question of the week. And this week's question is, how do you keep yourself fit? How do you keep yourself healthy uh, for the actual craft? Because a lot of uh, our industry, uh, probably more than 80% of our entire industry is one or one and a half person companies. So if you hurt your knee, if you hurt your back, that's sort of your company and that's it. And we all know as business owners, we cannot file for work comp, we can't file for unemployment. All of our employees can, but we cannot. So you're a single person painter, you fall off a ladder, you don't treat yourself as well as you could have, and uh, you hurt your back, that's it. There's no money for you. There's no anything for you. You're just out and your business stops immediately. So very important to me uh, to, to keep myself healthy so this can keep going on for a long time because it is a very manual labor sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, effort driven company. So um, I get very bored with exercise and fitness and all that stuff. So every winter, uh, usually summer is enough where we're running around, we're doing enough physical stuff. I don't feel the need to uh, do anything for myself. In the winter, every winter I try something new. Last winter was the winter of sort of like yoga and stretching and that was unbelievable. It also got unbelievably boring doing the same thing. I tried to mix it up with different routines and all this other stuff, but it still kind of is what it is. Uh, Isaac, how's it going? Uh, this winter is the winter of swimming. So we have a brand new uh, world-class state-of-the-art uh, sort of a rec center, fitness center, uh, community center uh, a couple blocks from my house and they have an Olympic sized swimming pool and uh, as most of you know I'm a fairly early riser I get down there and I basically have an Olympic sized swimming pool to myself to just uh, swim some laps get loose uh, just kind of uh, it's it, it's interesting I spend most of my day plugged into podcasts uh, listening to things trying to further my knowledge of things oh Ryan Turry how's it going man Mike Wojohn uh, two fellow uh, awesome Minnesota painters so I, I it's, it, I, I spend a lot of my day plugged in listening to stuff. Even when I'm in my office, there's a podcast on in the background, something uh, that's that's sort of trying to infect myself with knowledge. And um, it's nice to get in the pool. Uh, I only do it for about 20, 25 minutes a day because that's all I can stand before I get bored out of my mind. But it's nice to force yourself to unplug uh, and, and swim some laps and just tread around for a little bit and actually think and it's uh, it's where I do a lot of my planning for the day where I kind of uh, I kind of know what has to be done uh, but then I start setting my priorities about what's really gonna be good today so Alex Alex Marchuk how's it going buddy um, yeah so that's basically what I do I try to stay loose you know in my younger days uh, when I first started my business I was fresh out of college fresh out of the military and I was strong like an ox and I was as fit as I'll ever be and uh, my production rates were very high I was a single man company and I realized that it was only going downhill from here so I spent a lot of my time you know uh, doing the standard fitness stuff and then pretty soon I realized like all the, the most important part for longevity is for my mentality I have to do something that I'll comply with and it has to be something that will help me in the long run and staying loose uh, stretching yoga 
the act of swimming, just moving around, getting your muscles moving every morning, getting your uh, getting your heart rate up a little bit, seems to be the most helpful thing for me. And most importantly, I don't get that bored with it. By the time I get bored with it, the 20 or 25 minutes is done, and then it's also maybe end of the winter, and then I can pick my next thing. So um, one of these winters, uh, I did spend a winter maybe five years ago where I was doing just like walking in the snow for, for about a half an hour every morning. And uh, that was extremely exhausting because most of the snow up here is the, uh, somewhere between your knee and your waist. So, uh, but it's kind of fun to get out in the twilight uh, in the early morning and do that. So, oh, Jason Paris. All right, good friend, Jason Paris. Uh, I want to post a picture. <laughs> it's so sad I can't comment photos. Yeah, uh, Jason, uh, I'd be curious to hear your uh, your routine. I know that you, uh, you're you very intentional about your days here. And uh, the PDCA contractor question of the week was just about kind of keeping yourself healthy. And I know that that's something you do as well. So, all right. Um, we will not stall this any longer. I want to get to spraying. I want to get to doing all this uh, fancy stuff with my, uh, with my grain and pore filling. Uh, so number one... Um, I've been doing a lot of work on sort of uh, summarizing uh, some sheets for my clients uh, so that they can understand what they're going to get when we paint their cabinets. Because for all of us who paint cabinets professionally, we get the same questions every once in a while, not every once in a while, we get the same questions every time we do a cabinet estimate. Number one question always is, and all you pros know this, can you see the grain after? And before it was, you know, 10 years ago, you, you, what they wanted to hear was, oh no, everything is glass smooth. Uh, and so you're like, well, you know, we do this, we do this. Nowadays, I'm like, listen, I got three or four cabinet doors, sample doors in my truck. I'll go get one for you as soon as I type your estimate up, bring it back in here, and I'll actually show you what you're gonna get. And these cabinet doors, these three cabinet doors here are actually my sample cabinet doors that I take around to clients uh, and show them what they actually gonna get. And what you can see here, I made this one for a builder, is uh, they love this. This is what I call the stepped out finish. So we go from a bare oak, we go to stained and varnished, uh, coat of oil primer, one coat of uh, hybrid enamel, and then two coats of hybrid enamel. And what you're left with, make sure we can get a good, is, is something that I call filled pores. Now, very important that we discuss the difference, and I'm testing out a new wide angle lens on the iPhone today, but, very important that we discuss the difference between grain filling and pour filling. Um, oh, Donnie Kimbler also another Minnesota painter. Love Donnie. Uh, Dean Cud, thanks for watching as well. So our clients, when they talk about shines, when they talk about filling pours or grain, they don't they don't use the words like we do because we use them every day. We're very thoughtful about them. We think about them. So when somebody says, "Do you still see the grain?" Yes. Oh, Dominic Crowley from overseas. I love this guy. Uh, for anybody who doesn't follow Dominic Crowley, I'll take a short aside. Go to Instagram, follow Dominic. He does insanely good work and it's so fun to watch a foreign painter <laughs> do their work. So, all right. Very important that we talk about grain and pore filling. What the client wants to know is that, oh my God, is this just going to be horrible? Is there going to be like tiger flame grain cathedral patterns? What I tell my people is yes, you're going to see some grain. It is completely universal. Uh, and we fill the pores and not the grain. And I always make sure to tell people that there's a huge difference there. Filling the grain to me means completely glass smooth. Um, I don't have my maple cabinet door with me, but uh, yeah, here's a piece of, so this would be a non-open pore wood, you know, like a birch plywood or something like that. To me, we can get that glass smooth. Uh, filling the grain would mean completely making it glass smooth, making it look like even better than a piece of hard maple cabinetry. Um, Mike Wojohn, how's it going? Uh, Nick Brassfield, uh, good to see you guys watching. Filling the pores is much different. Filling the pores is this. There are absolutely no open black pores in this piece. So when you look at it from a distance like this, uh, unless, the, unless the light catches it like this, there is no grain to this cabinet door. Um, and especially when you stand more than five feet back, as we know the standard for, you know, a flaw in woodwork is five feet away, six feet away under normal light. So I'm very, I'm very careful to tell my clients about, um, you know, grain versus pore filling. And the first thing you have to say, and this is a very hot topic, um, painting cabinets, painting oak trim is the hottest thing going right now. Everybody, there's a lot of mysticism. There's a lot of magic things that people do things, lots of step processes, which are great. They give you a good thing. But 
most people would be served best most of the time by doing a simple three-step process. Um, <laughs> Katie, how's it going? Jason, he put a link there or a link there. Uh, we'll check that out. Mr. Schmidt, thanks for watching. So um, very important is that, uh, again, we, we, did, we, we be very honest with our clients about what they're actually going to get when they're done. Now, um, to me, the biggest part of grain filling um, doesn't necessarily occur on the first coat. So my process for getting grain, or, or sh I should probably use the terms correctly, pores filled, because we're not going to fill the uh, grain, um, I explain to my clients that um, for the labor uh, that it takes to actually make an oak cabinet door glass smooth, you're basically at replacement cost. So I'm trying to think. I think this one... I think this one was a brand new oak cabinet door here, brand new oak cabinet door. And I've got cabinet doors made by local cabinet makers uh, for as uh, inexpensively as 20 to $40 per door. Now, what that means for us pros is, you know, if your charge rate is $60, $70 an hour, that means you've got about a half an hour to make that door glass smooth with your labor. If you can't do that, then you might as well buy a new door and start over with a piece of wood that's already uh, open pour free. Start off with MDF, uh, use some uh, closed grain wood, hard maples, things like that, and you'll actually get a good um, a good substrate. So for me, it's, it's not, hey Nick, how do you fill the grain? I don't fill the grain. We get new cabinet doors because in the long run, it's way more cost effective and you can guarantee a result at the end. Nick, how do you fill pours? That's what we're going to get into now here. So, uh, <laughs> oh Katie, will you write a book on painting cabinets? Uh, Interestingly enough, people always ask for my apprenticeship program for, for written documents like that. 10% of what I do is, is aided by written or visual materials. 90% is getting out there and doing it. So sadly, I don't have a shortcut. You guys are going to watch this here. And until you get in your shop or in the field and try this, you may not necessarily know. So Thomas, thanks for watching. Dustin, good friend Dustin up in Vancouver watching as well. So here's what I do with cabinets. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about a special product from Sherwin as well that I just got my hands on recently. So basically what I do is I use oil primer and I use hybrid top coats. One coat of oil primer, two coats of a hybrid top coat. Uh, and I do not try to fill the pores uh, that intentionally on the first coat. So <sighs> filling the pores in oak is a multi-step process. If you do a few little things here and there, you'll get, you'll get a uh, finished product which is very, very closed poured like this. It all starts with your prep work. So sanding, vacuuming, and tacking. So SVT, a system that we call SVT in my company. We sand with medium grit sanding sponges, 180 grit, give or take, uh, sanding paper on random orbital sanders. We use a brush attachment. I had my brush attachment here, but I actually have uh, one of my craftspeople upstairs finishing woodwork today here in the shop. And um, we vacuum off most of the dust. And then we tack rag microfiber towels with uh, drenched in water, wrung all the way out so they're barely wet anymore, and you get the last of the powder off. That, that simple process of SVT will already start to level it. And especially if you have a horrible, horrible lacquer job uh, from, from previous, uh, most of you know that lacquer will sort of crowd around the grain like this. I'll see if I can show you. If you can see... If you can see these open pores, look right between the things here. So this is some very, very heavy grain in this uh, in this oak cabinet door. This is just a scrap drawer front here. But you can see that when you spray a lot of primers on here, the finish will actually crowd around the grain. So people automatically think, you know, okay, we're just going to spray it on heavy. It'll it'll eventually soak in there and it'll level off in that. There is, there is no product that will go in there and completely level it off. You have to do many, 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 many coats, and then you're starting to mess with a lot of science and chemistry that a lot of people don't understand. Uh, cab acrylic lacquer on top, says Clinton. Yeah, so we're going to get into that too. Uh, I am not a big lacquer fan, and I say that with all due respect for everybody who is, but I know that uh, most of the industry is lacquer uh, for numbers of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, it being very brittle and uh, doesn't play well with water is one of the main reasons that I don't use lacquer. That's why I use my oil primer and uh, hybrid top coat system. So after you SVT the cabinets, you already started to level that grain. And if you get that pore crowding like this, that'll start to level that off a little bit too. Then what we do is we shoot oil primer, which is the white coat right here. And you can see already that 
with the oil primer, we're already filling the, the uh, pores on this one. So that goes a long way. Now, but oil primer, like I said, will not go on there and it will not sink in uh, by itself if it's not properly prepped and it will not level out. There's, there's not a lot of products that will do that. I'll get to some of your questions right there. So um, then what you do is SVT again, sand back and tack, and you level the, uh, you level the um, uh, pores again. Now at this time, I would say 75% of the kitchen cabinets I, I do, uh, we don't have to do anything special to fill the pores in the wood. Our two coats of um, hybrid top coat uh, is all we need to fill the pores. Another little thing that I do that is sometimes a, uh, a big pain in the rear end for a lot of other painters is I finish all my doors and drawers flat. And I don't know if you can see this here. We got, I'll take my hook off, but in my shop, we have a series of these uh, modular walls like this, and we actually, um, we spray and we lay all of our doors and drawers flat. Now, simple thing, this does add about twice the amount of drying time because you can only finish one side at a time, but what it does give you is the ability to put on your enamel and your primer at full wet mill thickness uh, dictated by the technical data sheet for the product, it also gives it time to level. So even brand new first day apprentices can spray a cabinet door and as long as it's laying flat, it always turns out great like that. So, all right, uh, before we get on to the actual grain filling, let's go through a couple questions here. Cosmos painting. Uh, do you have a standard price for cabinets or it all depends? It really does all depend. And a lot of it has to do with market prices, time of the year. I can probably charge 30% more for a, a set of kitchen cabinets in the middle of summer than I can uh, in the middle of winter just because people are a little more active in the summer. But uh, I'd be happy if you email me, nick at nickslavic.com. We can certainly talk offline. I'd, I'd be curious to get your input. So Thomas Blankenship, keep up the great work and thanks for sharing. Absolutely, man. Uh, Kami Rochelle Fox, what oil primer do you like? Um, Sherwin Williams, Extreme Block Oil Primer, Zinzer Cover Stain. Uh, the most readily available, the best stuff. I've never had a failure with each. They always block stains and they sand beautifully, both of them. Um, Sherwin Williams, Easy Sand too. Don't, don't sleep on that one. Uh, Alex Marchuk, do the hybrids yellow like oil? I've never seen it. I've been using hybrids for eight years now. I've never seen a hybrid yellow. Dalton Tomlinson, thanks for watching. So, okay, we have now SVT'd our cabinet, sand back tack. We have primed with oil primer. We have SVT'd again. And at that point, you'll be able to tell immediately if there's open pores that need to be manually filled. And by manually filled, it's the little thing that I do extra sometimes on, um, on some of these cabinets. Now, if all the pores, if you do a good job and your pores look like this, where it's like, oh my gosh, that's great. You know, 75% of my cabinets are like that after a, after a heavy prime and an F SVT. We don't need to do anything extra. We go straight to two top coats. If we do need to do something extra, I'm gonna actually show you guys uh, how I do it here. Um, it's very, very simple. It's very intuitive where we actually get some paint on the cabinet door. We manually work it in with a brush to fill the pores and then we respray again immediately so that we don't get any brush marks. And I have a couple samples here I'll do for you. Um, we're actually gonna do a color change on some of these cabinets. Um, I wanna give some samples to my um, uh, I'm going to give some samples to my clients and I wanted to have two colors on there. So we already have Navajo white on it. I'm going to do some dove white, which are kind of the two most popular cabinet uh, colors for me. So a couple more questions and we're actually going to spray a little bit. So, uh, John Spencer, what system do you use to sand? Uh, surf prep. Uh, I've been recently introduced to a couple months ago, insanely good, insanely refined sanding tools. We also have Merca Festool DeWalt in the shop. We use just about everything. Everything works awesome. Don't sleep on Festool. Festool is not just another different colored little hand sanding machine. Festool is actually a little bit more refined machine. It's got a very, very tight sort of uh, rotation. Uh, it feels like a finely tuned piece of machinery. So, and that, and it comes with that really thick pad so you can actually sand right in the grooves here instead of, you know, the traditional way of uh, mechanical sanding this and then uh, this. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, I will show you how we fill these pores, and then I'm going to show you uh, a product that I was recently introduced to, a, uh, a waterborne acrylic universal primer from Sherwin, and I actually did some tests, and I'll show you guys about that. Now, another, I'm going to use the door that I actually did with the Sherwin. So if you can see down the door here, and this is uh, this has way less to do with the Sherwin product 
than it does with uh, just wood in general. Um, and I, I show this, uh, I show this very uh, intentionally in my master's classes that people think I'm just going to put on two to three times as much uh, oil primer or top coat, and it'll eventually level off and do that. Interestingly enough, it, you can actually harm a set of kitchen cabinets very badly. So in, in my experiments in my shop, when I tried to get things to fail, and if anybody wants to see this, I can send you images. I, I pushed all these coatings to the limit, and once you go past about two and a half to three times the uh, intended wet mill thickness of some top coats, what'll happen is the pores will initially be filled by the enamel like that. Um, it'll level off, but because m the hybrid enamel that I use takes so long to kind of cure and dry, you know, maybe an hour or two sometimes, what happens is there's a microscopic bit of air down in that pore, and over the next couple hours, you'll actually see a bubble grow, and sometimes I've had them be like a half inch thick, where the bubble keeps growing and keeps growing and pulls the enamel around it, and you come back the next day in the shop, and you have like this little mushroom forest all over your cabinets. You can definitely sand them off, but you still have the open pore, and then you have some areas with too much stuff, uh, too much enamel, and then you're messing with chemistry. They give you a wet mill thickness for a reason. Uh, you shouldn't exceed it because now you're getting all these weird layers that may not be curing in time. So, um, oh, Glenn Hyatt, uh, Cosmos, thanks. Uh, keep up the great work. Do you prefer HVRP or airless? Oddly enough, I'm going to do both. Uh, I am an airless guy and an air-assisted airless guy, mainly airless, but I have an HVP, uh, HVLP loaded up here. We also have um, one of my favorite pumps, like a 20-year-old Titan airless that I found in my dad's garage and just started using. I've never repacked it, so it's it's a fun thing. I'll show you guys both. I won't wait you. I won't make you wait any longer. We're going to spray these cabinets. I'm going to show you how I grain fill. So here's the situation: we've prepped the cabinets, we've SVT'd, we've primed. We've SVT'd again, and we've determined that there's a lot of open pores in these cabinets. So now it's like, well, what do you do? Do you get out grain filler, putty, all that other stuff? No. What you do is you lay your cabinet door on your little, uh, here, let's get this going here. I'll just show you in route. Let's see if we can get a look at this guy here. Okay. I'll move this out of the way for now. So what we'll do, and because these are cabinet doors, you may be wondering what all this prep is. Uh, this is a stepped off finish here, primer. This is a finish side, uh, Navajo white. We're doing white dove here, hybrid enamel. So, doors prepped. We've determined that there is, that there's open grain on this door. And how are we gonna fill it? Uh, we will spray a little paint on, we'll manually work it in with a brush, and then another light coat with the sprayer. Your, um, the purpose is to basically get about one, the equivalent of one uh, recommended wet mill application on there at a time. You use the brush to manually fill, and normally what you'll find is you get it on the end grains, uh, end grain of uh, oak like this that you need to fill. That's where you normally see it. Sometimes we'll do a, kitchen, a set of kitchen cabinets and it's only this area right here. All right. So what we'll do is we'll put a little paint on there, we'll manually fill it and immediately spray it. And we don't just manually fill and then go back over and spray them. The purpose of manually filling with a brush and spraying right away is then there's no brush marks. You put enough wet paint on there where you fill the pores and then immediately back spray it and then it still has time to flatten out. So I'll check my sprayer here. Get my brush ready. And sorry guys, I'm uh, I was dying this week of some sort of illness here. So uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to wear a respirator because I do want to talk. But uh, basically, we're going to put some paint on, manually fill, and then spray again. especially the ends of cabinets. Those usually get treated fairly poorly. You brush away from the corners. Obviously you never brush like that. You're gonna get a huge lump of paint. Okay, looks like we got our grain filled pretty well. And hit it, and it's about a half coat brush, half coat again. Put it up 
to, I like to dry mine flat. We'll go flat up there. I'll show you another one here. There's another sample cabinet door that I want to give uh, to my clients. Hit it again. Working very methodically to hit all the areas that need it. Also not forgetting an area. Brushing with the grain when you can, especially with this end grain. A lot of the times I like to lay it in there and go both ways to kind of fill that grain. Not leaving any ridges. You know, if you go like this, sometimes you can leave a ridge right here. So I'll see what I can do to get rid of it with the brush. Brushing away from the corners. Build grain. Set this over to dry. All right, pop this guy up again. All right, so best part about this system is it doesn't take that much extra time. In in uh, it takes our people once a set of oops once a set of kitchen cabinets is prepped. Uh, it usually takes my people for an average 38 to 40 piece kitchen. Uh, it usually takes them like a half an hour with an apprentice and a helper to buzz through that stuff, putting a coat on. If you have to manually do it, it usually takes maybe 60, 70% longer than that. So it doesn't really add a lot to a process. If you think about, you know, the time it takes to do an average kitchen, 60 to 80 hours uh, worth of man hours into there, and you throw in another maybe hour at the most to do this, you can have perfectly filled poured cabinets, uh, perfectly pour filled cabinets like that. Now, very important part about this is there are tons of other things you can do. You can get out Swedish putty, you can get out wood filler, you can get out Bondo, you can get out all this stuff and do this. For what the processes that I'm interested in is biggest bang for the buck, biggest uh, opportunity cost in something. I can basically provide so much value with just one hour or less of my time with this stuff that to provide a significantly higher amount of value to the client, you would have to spend so much time, so much more money that you may not get the job in the end. So very important to me um, that we meet the client's expectations. And I worry a lot about these cabinets because uh, it's a very tricky process. Uh, I've done enough of them by... Uh, uh, by hand, by brush, by everything else now. And uh, so I have a lot of data points and honestly, simpler is better. A three coat system, you prep well, you prime well, a couple top coats, maybe get the brush out and grain fill a little bit. Most people will be served in the best way most of the time by doing that simple process. So I also wanted to talk about, well, we should maybe check for some questions here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Amber Hutchins, what's your go-to paint for cabinets? So I am a oil primer fan, and then I'm a hybrid top coat fan. So either uh, Benjamin Moore Advance, uh, satin is kind of my preferred, or the uh, Sherwin Emerald Trim Urethane. Um, I like the satin. Uh, a lot of people, it's too dull for them. I like the duller, low luster enamels, the mattes. Uh, but semi-gloss kind of meets my client's needs. For the, You'll get the equivalent of about this. Uh, the product we just used was a... 20 year old Titan sprayer spraying emerald trim urethane satin uh, using a gray coat tip. So we are a, uh, a very open shop here and uh, we use every everything and anything. So, all right, let's see what else we got here. And then we'll talk about uh, Sherwin's thing. Amber Hutchins, I'm doing one all by hand. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, Kami Rushow Fox, when a client asks about durability, what do you say? I actually wrote a long article about this today for this old house that I just uh, sent in. I hope I can share with you guys. But if you look back through my Instagram feed, you'll see an, an actual picture of one of my sample cabinet doors. And I wrote like 13 tips um, about cabinet painting. And it's basically every question that every client's ever asked me. And the two biggest ones are, again, are you going to fill the grain? And number two, is it going to chip? And what I say is very honest. If you take a frying pan and you hit my cabinets, you will chip the paint. Wood is a hard substrate. Metal is a hard substrate. My paint is a hard, uh, a hard substrate, but it is not as hard as a metal frying pan and it is not as hard as oak. So the coating will always be the weakest link into that whole process there. 
Same thing with wedding rings. If you have a handful of crazy big costume jewelry wedding rings and you're reaching for those knobs aggressively every day, you will chip my paint. You will chip everybody's paint. You will chip a factory finish. You will chip an Ikea cabinet. You will chip conversion varnish, lacquers, water-based, hybrids, everything. It's just the name of the game. Our, our coatings are very good. They are basically the toughest, most beautiful thing you can do to a lived-in house. There are polyureas, there are polyesters, there are all sorts of two-part conversion varnishes, things like that, that are harder, none of which are, um, are uh, blessed with the ability to do on-site. No manufacturer will stand by them. So, uh, da, 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 da. let's see who else we got here. All right, so let's talk about a product that my friendly Sherwin Williams rep, Wes, dropped off. Uh, kind of, a, he he knows that I'm into anything cool, anything interesting. So, doesn't have a a great super catchy name like Emerald Trim Urethane, but it is a Sherwin product uh, from the Sherwood line, Universal Waterborne Primer. So basically, this is a super fast drying primer. Uh, and everything, everything from here on off, besides the name, is basically my conjecture and my experience with it. So this is not me reciting the technical data sheet. This is a super fast drying water-based primer. Uh, I did a bunch of samples here for you. This one, I sprayed about five or ten minutes before the show here. And it is an amazing, this is a, just a backside of a piece of birch plywood here. But... Uh, you can see, you can see the powder coming off of that in a matter of 10 to 25 minutes, give or take. Um, this stuff sands absolutely beautifully. Um, it sands like nothing else. It is just an amazing, amazing product. Now there are limits to this. Um, it builds a beautiful, uh, beautiful build like that. This is just a defect in the plywood here, but uh, beautiful. It fills those pores, and especially on like even the backside of a piece of rough birch plywood, does a heck of a lot to fill those pores and get you ready for some top coat. Now, my friend and Sherwin Williams rep, uh, Wes, he knows that I basically want to uh, turn my entire outfit into a water-based system. But when you can get such beautiful stuff like this from hybrids or oils and oil primers, I have to stick with that for now. So whenever products like this come along, I'm interested in it and uh, I'm, I, I always love to try it. Now, the difference is it is waterborne. And even though it's quick dry, it's got some good stuff in it that makes it dry. You can see that this is just a bare oak. Uh, not even an old oak. This is just a bare oak cabinet door here. You can see where I taped off right here. This is the pure white of the primer, and this is that over oak. So you're going to get uh, the chance for some tannin bleeds if you go straight over um, woods that technically have that acid-based tannins and things in there. So um, this as well, this is a this used to be this. It's an old junk uh, drawer front like this. Uh, no prep at all. Went right over the top there. And yeah, I mean, you're gonna you're you run the risk of getting a little bit of tannin bleed and stuff like this. But this um, this Sherwin Williams product is not made for pre-finished cabinet or uh, already finished cabinets like that. It's for raw wood. And specifically, I would say if you have poplar, if you have birch. If you have some alders and things like that, this is where I would use that stuff, where you're not going to get a big chance of a tannin bleed, things like that. Uh, woods that don't have a lot of tannic acid and things in them. Uh, but especially if you have some poplar or some birch plywood or, uh, you know, a whole bunch of uh, uh, poplar trim and stuff like that, this would be absolutely ideal for it. And if you can sand it in uh, somewhere between 10 minutes and a half an hour, I mean, that's pretty good. So uh, let's see if we got any questions here. Oh, I was actually going to spray some of that stuff for you guys. So, do, 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 do. James Ross, waterborne sucks. Well, it depends what you're doing. Uh, if you're doing pre-finished oak cabinets, yes, it, it sucks. If you're doing if you're doing poplar or birch like this, it's magical. <laughs> it's a great thing. And I want it. I want it to not suck for everything. But the technology is not quite there yet. It's getting there. It's very close, and I can't wait till it does. Uh, hybrid is kind of tiding me over till now. Uh, let's see. Cliff Tucker, how many calls for glazing? Uh, I get the glazing call 
maybe a dozen times a year. And uh, I basically just tell people it's such a subjective uh, process and finish. I say, you got to show me a picture of what you want because my glazing is not your glazing. We're talking color placement, how much you leave on, how much you leave off. Some people barely like a hint of glazing and some people like the cabinet doors to look like they rolled down a hill. They're so damaged. So I, uh, they show me a picture and I just do what I can for them. Uh, that, that works well in MDF. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. So I was going to spray a little bit of this new uh, Sherwin stuff to me. So we'll get a, get another one of these up here. And uh, it is a little bit looser uh, finish. Uh, it's nice and thin, as you would imagine. Quick drying. And I am actually going to be using a... HVLP, my, my Graco HVLP. So I'll fire this thing up and we'll get going here. Make sure we build our, our pressure in there. Get the little uh, coating bag all cinched up. Get some product coming through it. Takes a second to expend the air. I only have about a half pint in there. It's coming, that bag is cinching up in the cup there. All right, well, I might have to add a little more here. Okay, so for another time, I can show you guys what I did spray uh, over here. So. This cabinet door, uh, I did spray uh, about a half an hour before the show here. And you can see this stuff, you can actually see whatever open pores were on there. You can watch this stuff level. It's just an amazingly smooth surface. You can see how smooth that stuff is in a very short while. It almost polishes itself. Um, so I am waiting for my next uh, closed pour woodwork enameling uh, project. I'm going to give that stuff a try there. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Da, 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 da. Uh, do, 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 do. HVLP or air assist. Uh, so that one was HVLP. And uh, I think I used almost all the coating up. There's only about a half pint left in there. And it's taken a long time to get the, uh, the suction out of the bag there. So we won't mess with that there. But I did this one about a half an hour. So maybe this has been less than an hour going here. And then uh, also this one as well. So uh, this one was a couple minutes before the show just to see what it did with the pre-finished piece of uh, stuff though. But very promising product, uh, almost no smell to it, dries very quickly and uh, seems to be a great product. So it's very promising to me when we see something that, you know, if you, uh, if you, if you didn't have an indication by smell, you would think that this was a lacquer. It dries so quick and, and it goes on so evenly, levels out, yeah, it's a great product. So see if we got any, oh, Renato. Hanato, thank you so much for watching. Uh, love you guys down there. Uh, Bonoche. 
And all right, everybody, that's it for me today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, I will be on here. I will answer any questions that you guys want. I have a, a master's class full of this stuff on cabinet finishing, grain filling, pour filling, all that other stuff. So whatever I can do to help you guys, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, Friday afternoon is family time for me. And I'm going to enjoy the winter wonderland we have here. If anybody didn't uh, see my videos from this week, uh, we got something they called like the tornado bomb vortex something storm. And it's kind of great. Uh, I love the winter, uh, just not at this time of the year. Uh, it's kind of sickening. And we're about to start our exterior season in about two weeks. And we are covered in snow again. So everybody... Thank you so much. Uh, I absolutely love everybody watching here. I really do appreciate it. And uh, have a good weekend. Uh, let's make sure we got... Let's see if we got a warning. Da, 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 da. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Family time for me this afternoon. So uh, have a good weekend, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you to the uh, PDCA as well, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America, for being a good partner with the show, and we'll see you guys later.